Man, I cannot wait to find out what happened to Luke, Han, and Leia after the return of the Je Episode 1? Episode 1? Does that mean this story's going backwards literally and figuratively? Also, reading. Also, I didn't read any of that shit, let alone comprehend it. A New Hope's first scene, Battle of Vader overtaking Leia's ship. Empire's first scene, Hoth battle. Return of the Jedi's first scene, Tatooine rescue. But this movie's first scene, political ambassadors part of an envoy to talk about trade blockades. Funny, since the days of episode four, which is technically after this movie's events, how much extra technology this era has over its successor. This way, please. When our high-ranking political guests have to walk at the slow-ass pace of a droid like this, maybe we've taken the robot workers concept too far. I have a bad feeling about this. Come with me if you want to live! Also, Liam Neeson isn't killing anyone in this scene. Also, goddammit, this stupid-ass rat tail. I thought various ponytails were for either preventing hair from getting in the way or to be cool. This is neither. Discuss. Be mindful of the living force, young Padawan. <sighs> the ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. Why would the Chancellor send obvious Jedi to the Trade Federation when it's pretty obvious they would never agree to enter the same room with them? Sending Jedi to something like this is almost like declaring war. At least make them not dress like Jedi so it can be a surprise. Kill them immediately. As you wish. Because killing Jedi is easy. We're on it, boss. Can you send gas to just one room when you feed it into the air conditioning system? Or was this room created by Spectre to execute people you don't like on a whim? They must be dead by now. Destroy what's left of them. Not only does this asshole not wait long enough for the Jedi to be dead, but he also thinks dead Jedi need further destruction. These motherfuckers had these Jedi in here all alone, with pretty much nowhere to go. The room is filled with gas. They have no reason to open this door at all. Even if you think they might lightsaber their way through the door, why not just have your droids waiting to gun them down as they did that? Check it out, Corporal. We'll cover you. Robot soldiers have corporals? Here's your action in a nutshell. Jedi mowing down mindless minions, making a mockery of middling mechanisms. What is going on down there? We lost each mission, sir. You might be expecting me to send these characters obviously racist accents. And fine, I will. But I'm more interested in seeing how an advanced ship like this could possibly lose all transmission from the affected area. You don't have a backup camera or hallway gear? Why not just do that for the whole army? What did this exactly do anyway? Are they dead? Unconscious? Are we about to see them reboot like all Terminators do? All this destruction and there isn't any smoke, scratch marks, burns, or anything marking a battle took place other than some ruined droids. If you want to know why subconsciously you were hating this movie, it's little details like that. Did someone open a dusty chest where this spare droid was just lying around? Fly, my pretty, fly! They are still coming through! This is impossible! This guy doesn't understand what impossible means. More Jedi. Master, destroy us! This movie suddenly becomes like a video game where the bad guys send new enemies for the hero to fight, but just two of them so the game doesn't get too challenging too fast. Are they watching this footage in the door that was nearly melted by Qui-Gon just a second ago? They've gone up the ventilation shaft! Quick, shoot some gas in there! I see they applied Natalie Portman's board makeup. Oh wait, that's not makeup? A communications disruption can mean only one thing. Invasion. What? Do you not know about asteroids and other space anomalies? Are communications always perfect for you assholes? The Senate would revoke their trade franchise, and they'd be finished. You're still talking about this? Why didn't this movie start off with Jedi doing real Jedi things with the political theater firmly in the background? Who gives a about this stuff? I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. But I will condone this hairdo I'm sporting, which surely cost gobs of government dollars, but whatever. I'm guessing in 2019, George Lucas will want to add some more lizards to this shot so that it will finally be complete. <laughs> this is basically Jurassic Avatar. I love you! So look, of course we're going to raise the sin total by a hundred just because of Jar Jar Binks. But as we all know, Jar Jar is just a symptom of a far greater evil going on with these movies, blissfully unaware of what makes a positive impact. <laughs> Glad we could see the camera follow this chunk of sprites falling to the ground to add to our enjoyment. I think this movie's discount Dagobah scene was so cheap it might as well be from Spaceballs. Jedi can only go underwater via the help of some they stole from Q at MI6. Well, you should find a new hour today. Jar Jar is the friendliest Song of the South character of the modern era. Yusa go into the bosses. Yusa in big doo-doo this time. Yusa in big doo-doo this time. You can see it, right? The green screen studio Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson are standing in? A droid army is about to attack the Naboo. We must warn them. We shall no like the Naboo. Wait, I thought Naboo was the name of the planet. You and the Naboo form a symbiont circle. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. It appears that the Gungans and the Naboo are completely separate from each other. These guys live in what is basically a secret underwater city and do fine without one another, so I don't get it. Huh? The speediest way to the Naboo is going through the planet core. This place is basically Earth, right? The planet core isn't going to be ridiculously hot or anything? Okay. Also, the whole reason the clone army came down to Naboo was to fight the people here, but they decided to land on the other side of the planet? Why? Is it so we could see Star Wars turn into Finding Nemo before Finding Nemo existed? He owes me what you call a life debt. Your gods demand that his life belongs to me now. 
I know this because I know everything about your culture I just learned existed five minutes ago. I mean, seriously, he just had this exchange with Obi-Wan. Master, what's a bongo? A transport, I hope. But now he's suddenly an expert on Gungan law. Get the f*** out of here. You know, some folks say Lucas got bogged down in his world creation with the prequels, and those people are onto something and not entirely wrong. This underwater craft built by an underwater civilization has no mechanism for detecting ginormous fish that might be swimming behind it within swallowing distance. 20,000 Jedi under the sea. A big thing that ate a smaller thing gets eaten by an even bigger thing cliche. We're not even 20 minutes in and these hologram meetings make me want to stab the movie screen with Twizzlers. I have the Senate bogged down in procedures. They will have no choice but to accept your control of the system. Why? You didn't tell him about the missing Jedi. No need to report that to him until we have something to report. And obviously the reigning Sith Lord can't sense Jedi activity on his own, so we're gravy, baby. Where is it going? Don't worry. The Force will guide us. The Force also guided you to nearly getting eaten by a gooberfish just a second ago. Why do we trust this Force anyway? Obi-Wan fixes the ship by playing with a couple of wires. Seems legit. Relax. Qui-Gon waits 20 minutes into this movie to do this. Why are these invading ships attacking in a straight line instead of a super wide front? Viceroy, we have captured the Queen. Ah, victory! Wait, they captured the Queen without a fight? That's not so much a victory as it is a forfeit. Jar Jar's sub containing two Jedi pops up to the surface of a downtown Naboo waterway and no one notices. This is actually fake Queen Amidala, played by Kira Knightley. And this trailing servant is actually Natalie Portman, the real queen, which you only really notice on your second or third viewing. But my question is, what the f*** are you doing watching this a second or third time? I'm curious about many things in this shot. Most importantly, the reason why it looks fake as sh**. These birds are flying to join the Birdemic. I'll let you debate which movie is better. You could argue that it's a huge coincidence the two Jedi show up in Naboo at the same time the Queen is being whisked away and at the same spot. But someone's just gonna show up in the comments schooling you on midichlorians, so why bother? We should leave the streets, Your Highness. So absolutely no one from the Federation except a bunch of droids were ensuring the Queen got to the right place? They need her to sign a treaty to make this invasion of theirs legal. They can't afford to kill her. What? They need her to sign a treaty to make the invasion of her home planet legal? The movie substitutes the previous robot action scenes in like we won't notice. There's the blockade! One ship is going to attempt to go through a planetary blockade with the Queen in tow. In other news, I just beat LeBron James one-on-one -on -one with one hand tied behind my back, my left shoe tied to my right shoe, and playing with a football when I was on offense. Every droid but R2-D2 gets shot off the surface of the ship like bottles on Kid Rock's fence. R2, though, that f***er is indestructible, of course. And that's saying nothing about these droids' crazy ability to drive on the exterior surface of a moving spaceship. We can't get the shield generator fixed, we'll be sitting ducks! Aren't you all ready? You're right in front of the blockade, with a million ships staring you down. How are they missing you? Deflect the shields up at maximum! So this movie is saying if you have a shield generator, you can easily survive a blockade. Also, once you escape a planetary blockade, no one comes after you. I want that treaty signed. Why does it matter if the treaty gets signed or not? Aren't you evil? Do you care about laws and shit? Also, a movie steals the treaty excitement from, um, that one exciting treaty-based movie. I want to know how holograms actually work. Is there a booth you step inside? From the Emperor's perspective, does he see these two guys sitting down as holograms on opposite sides of a table? If so, what at this table is broadcasting them? Also, what's up with this hologram technology? That Darth Maul could be standing a few feet behind his master and not be seen, but step forward and reveal himself. An extremely well put together little droid, your highness. The Queen has time to recognize droid heroism. R2-D2, your highness. Yay, R2-D2, I remember that little guy. I completely forget that the first 28 minutes of this movie was about trade disputes. The hyperdrive generator's gone, Master. We'll need a new one. That'll complicate things. And the screenwriter saw that it was good, and it was good. We're on a stealth mission, so let's bring the slow asteroid and the clumsy court jester Jar Jar. Brilliant! Oh! Go! Fine. Even if this movie is for kids, even if Jar Jar was made for kids, no matter what excuse you give me, this stepping in shit scene is basically a metaphor for the whole franchise. Name one great kids movie that has a scene like this. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Don't touch anything. Hmm. Dictionary is unsatisfactory in coming up with the right words of anger for this scene. Are you an angel? Thus began the least believable on-screen romance since Anakin and Padme in Attack of the Clones. Wait. Mm. <laughs> if you subscribe to the brand new and totally insane internet theory that Jar Jar was originally intended to be a Yoda-like evil Jedi master this whole time, how do you explain this Three's Company bull? Credits will do fine. No, they won't! What, you think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? This didn't work against Jabba, and it didn't work against this pissant. So if the Force is only good against the weak-minded, what good is it? It should be able to take down some smarter creatures too, if it's worth a damn. Wouldn't have lasted long anyways if I wasn't so good at building things. Oh. Character backstory disguised as whining. Is that Greedo in the background? Why can't that motherfucker be shooting his trigger-happy gun right now? When a body meets a body coming through the CGI. Chesco Sebulba. Chipurka Umen Gisa. Aren't you supposed to be cleaning the racks? How did you get out of your child labor obligations to go save Jar Jar? This storm will slow them down. 
Looks pretty bad. It does? I mean, I hear wind sound effects and the picture is a tiny bit blurry, but as a viewer, I've been given no indication of a super serious sudden sandstorm or its severity. We'll head back to our ship. Is it far? Anakin is allowed to walk around with Qui-Gon everywhere he goes now, because he saved the most annoying character in the movie from a fight. How these characters all end up together is hardly organic. Jar Jar does nothing except be oppressed, so they keep him. Anakin saves that asshole, so they keep him. Remember how Luke and Han became a team? It came out of need. These characters get to tag along because the script says so. Come on, I'll take you to my place. Because sandstorms are very, very dangerous, and this sandstorm happened to coincide with a time when the Jedi and company were humoring a little boy tour guide, the rest of all the Star Wars can happen. Isn't he great? He's not finished yet. So, Anakin built C-3PO. Also, the odds of them being in the same narrative by the time A New Hope rolls around are astronomical. Oh, hello. I don't believe we have been introduced. The movie takes a character introduction that should feel epic and makes it feel... What's the opposite of epic? A death toll is catastrophic. As is this bill I just got for hologram communications. It is absolutely through the roof. We must survive on our own. <laughs> Jar Jar misses the apple, but he's definitely an asshole. I'm the only human who can do it. You must have Jedi reflexes if you race bots. Pod racing? It's no different from NASCAR or Formula One. The only human who can do it? Just another bullshit explanation for Qui-Gon to recruit this kid into the Jedi Academy. The prize money would more than pay for the parts they need. Basically, Star Wars turned into one of those 80s sitcoms where the characters need $10,000 and they find out there's a dance competition where they can win $10,000. He was meant to help you. Thank God Jar Jar got curious about some bullshit accidentally started a fight with some asshole, and Anakin was around to save him, even though I still don't think he cleaned those racks. Hologram budget exceeds 50 million. What if this plan fails, Master? By the way, movie sticks Obi-Wan on this ship, doing nothing, the entire time on Tatooine. That's exactly what we wanted to see the badass character from the original trilogy do, now didn't we? There's something about this boy. Why can't they Jedi talk to each other? Why do they need these little radios? Who was his father? There was no father. Wow, way to Jesus Christ the Anakin character. You know what would have been way more interesting? Almost any mysterious character from the galaxy impregnating you and then leaving. You could have even made that a big surprise reveal in the third movie somehow. Anything but this. Oh no, you're okay, Annie. <laughs> Quiet, baby Greedo. You're lucky we even let you hold the paddle. This movie has officially come to a dead stop. What's happened so far? 28 minutes about taxes and another 15 minutes or so of the brown bunny when we watched Vincent Gallo wash his car in real time. 35 second long conversation about midichlorians is 36 seconds too long. I need a midichlorian count. Hey, remember when you watched the original trilogy and you thought, man, if I could believe in the Force, I could be a Jedi. Well, it turns out Jedi creation depends on whether or not you have a lot of something really dumb called midichlorians in your bloodstream. How does an evil ship with a Sith Lord on it land on this planet without radar or Jedi intuition picking it up? As usual in these movies, only the bad guys have autonomous probes. I'll wager my new racing bot against, say, the boy and his mother. Oh, I see. Qui-Gon either knows for a fact that Anakin will win the race, or he's literally risking everything on a hunch. Either way, sit. Qui-Gon practices the Jedi way and cheats at the dice throw. Shit, he should just use his Jedi powers to sabotage the race if he's gonna subvert honesty anyway. I can assure you they will never get me onto one of those dreadful starships. Wah, wah. I love how strange evil flying drones are able to wander this planet without anyone thinking it's weird or shady. The first Star Wars accomplished and established more in 20 minutes than this movie has in an hour. <laughs> Sure, why not? Here's a hundred cents. Sebulba sabotages Anakin's pod racer in front of thousands of spectators, yet no one sees a thing. <laughs> Whoa, I just noticed something. Qui-Gon is played by a real person. Why didn't you fuckers tell me? Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me the kid isn't CGI. Lucas thinks the mere appearance of Jabba will make us jizz our pants, but Lucas is wrong as hell. Is there seriously nothing that tells Anakin that some part of his pod is broken right now? Okay, I'll admit it, pod racing is badass, and I'll even give two sins off for it, but it's not gonna help this piece of trash's ultimate sin score that much. Just in case you were wondering what happened to this guy you didn't care about, here's a scene explaining what happened to him. Alien rat carcasses here! Get your alien rat carcasses here! Uh, so Bulba's in the lead, followed closely by Skywalker! Okay, so how did Anakin catch up to Sebulba after his pod didn't start for the first 20 seconds of the race? And if his pod is faster, then why hasn't he blown past him already? He's had two major delays and somehow he's right behind the leader. Remember when Sebulba sabotaged Anakin's pod before the race even started? Yeah, after three laps and going zany miles per hour, only now does that affect the ship. So these computer screens tell you when something's wrong after all, but only after a ton of damage has been done. Aw, isn't that cute? This movie thinks it's Ben-Hur. <laughs> Jabba does an impression of me watching a NASCAR race. Well, we have all the essential parts we need. I'm going back. If you hear groaning, it's because these camel aardvark things are CGI abominations that were called into existence by an unmerciful god. Our meeting was not a coincidence. Yeah, it was. 
Look at the things that had to happen before they ran into Anakin. He had to stumble on Jar Jar on another planet, take him in, have him show them where his home was, get released by the Gungans, survive going through the Naboo Corps, have ship problems on the way to another planet, just happen to land on Tatooine, befriend the child slave of a guy who sold the part they needed, and then have Jar Jar accidentally get into a fight with a professional pod racer so Anakin could break it up. Even then, the kid just kind of joined him without an invite. And I still don't think he cleaned those racks! So what the hell has this probe been doing the whole time? Darth Maul sent three of these things out late one night, about 25 minutes ago in movie time. These things couldn't find the broken down ship for one whole evening, during the pod racing the next day, and the five hour goodbye to Annie's mom? Qui-Gon and Anakin are already running long before they know a Sith is just about ready to attack. Anakin, drop! Why couldn't you feel Darth Maul approaching a lot sooner than this? Thank God George Lucas shot this lightsaber battle in super close up jump cut vision because I almost figured out what was happening in this scene. Take off. Why doesn't Obi-Wan help Qui-Gon fight this guy? Neither of the Jedi are important for this ship. They just need to get Queen Amidala to the Senate. And later, the Jedi Council tells him to go investigate Darth Maul anyway. So why not now? Anakin Skywalker, meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. Meeting that should have been a lot cooler than it is. We're a democracy. The people have decided. Tuck him away. Skip Padme will go from maternal figure in this film to sexual partner in the next. Like that. And that is creepy as f Space is cold. It sure is, but aren't you on a ship? Doesn't it have heat? I made this for you. I carved it out of a poor snippet. When did you have time to do that? The total time Qui-Gon and everybody was down on the planet was like three days, and most of that time was spent fixing up your pod racer. Also, Japor snippets. But I don't need this to remember you by. Because we already have a creepy romantic connection that won't be spoken of aloud until you're old enough for me to see your Japor snippet, if you know what I mean. Wink. Many things will change when we reach the capital, Annie. It's called puberty. Coruscant, the entire planet is one big city. Thanks, narrator. I'm grateful for your concern, Chancellor. Do you think that maybe this fake queen has actually been playing the queen for so long she's gone too deep undercover? You think maybe she feels like she's actually the queen right now? These airships all stay in their lanes, despite there not being any clear Back to the Future 2 lane markers or anything. Queen Amidala, you look so obviously different from the last time I saw you. How do those handmaiden disguises even work? The courts take even longer to decide things than the Senate. They do? Well, sh It took an hour and 24 minutes for Yoda to even show up in this movie. You want to figure out where things went wrong? It's having Jedi play politics and only using their powers to smash up f***ing robots. Why didn't this movie start at a secret Jedi training ground? Something kind of like Dagobah, where Darth Maul comes in and assassinates a Jedi Master, played by Delroy Lindo or someone else 90s, and start the movie with that, instead of tax law. A boy. The cells have the highest concentration of midichlorians I have seen in a life form. Therefore, he's a good guy, I think. It is possible he was conceived by the midichlorians. The midichlorians were later arrested for sex offense. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. No, because Star Wars would never do anything as stupid as having some ancient prophecy muddy the waters, right? Who makes these prophecies? Which started right here with the taxation of trade routes. Star Wars Episode One. it's just as exciting as watching C-SPAN. I present Queen Amidala, recently elected ruler of the Naboo, who speaks on our behalf. Making my job as senator completely superfluous. Also, space politics. Also, this dangling dildo bullhorn hairdo. I know you want me to say something about the ET delegation down here, but I'm much more concerned about the Oogie Boogie delegation up here absolutely butchering the running man. The boy will not pass the council's test master. Jealous much? Do not defy the council master, not again. Movie hints at a much better movie that we'll never get to see. Mm, afraid to lose her, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, sh wouldn't you be too? Jedi Council makes it out like loving your mom is bad, assholes. Fear is the path to the dark side. Movie continues assault on fear, as though it never once led to a saved life or an avoided accident. Also, if you're telling me no Jedi has ever had fears, f*** you, Yoda. You're a liar and a dickhead. Everyone has fears. Why don't you just teach the kid how to move beyond them instead of acting like he's a total cheese for even having them? Samuel L. Jackson, just grateful to be in these f***ing movies, will now stroke his chin knowingly. You're thinking, you said people gonna die? Ladies and gentlemen, the power converters line of the new trilogy. No, he will not be trained. Yoda just went on a rant about how fear leads to the dark side, but isn't the council practicing fear by not allowing the training of Anakin? An apprentice you have, Qui-Gon. Impossible to take out a second. The code forbids it. Why? I heard Yoda talking about midichlorians. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? Skip. I don't understand. I think Jake Lloyd got a bum rap. Look at the cast of this movie. It's full of amazing actors. Ewan McGregor, Samuel L. Jackson, Natalie Portman, Liam Neeson, Keira Knightley, and they're all playing blocks of wood. I can almost hear Lucas on set. That was a good take, but try doing the line more like you're dead inside. You know, like you're a computer. Lucas deserves any and all sins that might otherwise have been directed at the actors in this movie. Come on, R2. There's no chance you can roll up the high edge of this platform, but we'll cut away before that so no one will ever know. Did something happen to the blockade? 
Remember, absolutely nothing changed since they left, except the Trade Federation has a tighter stronghold on the planet, so why the free reign to fly into Naboo all of a sudden? I am Queen Amidala. Huh? I'm sorry for my deception, but it was necessary to protect myself. How were you also fooled by the sh Ancient statues that are never explained and have no bearing on the plot accidentally inspire Lost. We shall make you Bombard General. Well, he certainly is qualified. We can enter the city using the secret passages on the waterfall side. Secret passages? Ex Machina. Somehow George Lucas manages to rip off the never-ending story. Once we get inside, you find a safe place to hide and stay there. The f is he doing on this mission anyway? Why isn't he chilling in Obi-Wan's apartment somewhere watching cheesy How to Be a Jedi videos? <laughs> Phantom Menace accidentally inspires all the albums made by T-Pain. <laughs> Prequel screen. <laughs> that guy should have ejected. Steady, steady. Oh, no one's listening to your dumbass. Well, sh why didn't they just do this before? Also, what kind of force field keeps out cannon fire but lets droids just walk through it? We'll handle this. I don't know why the Jedi have to take Darth Maul by themselves. They have a whole army behind them that could easily take him out right now. Well, Darth Maul is a criminally underused badass, and Duel of the Fates is one of the finest pieces of film score ever written. So we'll take three sins off here without looking back. Wait, here it is. While looking for the trigger, Anakin, a trained pilot, first pushes two dashboard buttons before grabbing the obvious trigger device. Everything this scene is and represents. Also, in the span of six seconds, Jar Jar hits more targets than all the stormtroopers in the entire Star Wars franchise combined. And on accident. Why isn't Anakin dead? He doesn't even know how to fly this thing yet, and he's running straight into the enemy without any problem. I'll try spinning! That's a good trick! Yeah, try that, asshole kid we hate, who we already know is going to survive whatever bullshit we see. Try that. Birds! We're about to see our first true scene of suspense in the movie, but what the hell is this place? This is some Galaxy Quest shit here. Oh yeah, the Gungans are fighting in this battle. I completely don't care about them. I mean, forgot about them. Jar Jar makes a fantastic tactical decision by complete accident. No! Your occupation here has ended. After her! This one's a decoy! Look, I know you want to make these Trade Federation guys half-wits, but do they really think the real queen would just run out in the open like this to save a decoy? Also, why were they certain the unmade-up queen was the queen anyway? I know Amidala came out from hiding to the Gungans, but to the rest of the world too? Well, it isn't a Jedi-Sith duel without there being an impossibly unending fall of some kind nearby. What's that? It's blowing up from the inside! Yeah, <laughs> funny story. Some little kid accidentally autopiloted one of our spacecraft inside the enemy ship and then accidentally fired a torpedo to set off the very chain reaction we need to defeat this thing. I know, I didn't believe it either, but what are you gonna do, am I right? Now this is pod racing! No, it's not. Too bad you don't have the thousand other ships that were forming the blockade earlier. Oh well. Enemies are controlled by one power source and die when it explodes cliche. Darth Maul taunts Obi-Wan here, but wouldn't it be pretty easy for him to kill Obi-Wan by, like, spear-throwing his lightsaber five feet down into Obi-Wan's face? I mean, where's he gonna go to dodge that sh <laughs> Darth Maul stands perfectly still while Obi-Wan does all this bullshit to kill him. Also, the coolest character this trilogy has gets killed like a little bitch in the first movie. It's, it's too late. You're still alive. Goodbye, Qui-Gon. I'll be sure to mention you in the next trilogy. Psych! Now, nah, Viceroy. Why did Amidala bother going back into her queen makeup and outfit and sh after doing battle with her soldiers? Did they actually sit around and wait for her to get all formal before sending the Viceroy back? Confer on you the level of Jedi Knight the Council does. Because you killed that one Sith guy, and not because you passed whatever nebulous trials were talked about earlier, but which were never shown. Grave danger, I fear, in his training. Fear leads to the dark side, Yoda. Agree with you, the Council does. The Jedi Council changes their mind about training Anakin because he lucked out destroying the droid ship. They still sense fear in him, right? Nothing else has changed, right? Qui-Gon's funeral is, for some reason, held on Naboo. What will happen to me now? You turn into Hayden Christensen, of course. There's no doubt the mysterious warrior was a Sith. Mm. Always two there are. Except when you kill one, right? Then there's only one, right? Right? But which was destroyed? The Master or the Apprentice? This would be a great way to end the movie. But, well, the first movie ended with a big celebration, so I guess this one has to as well. Still excited by this? Because that means you didn't see the last movie. Opening text crawl continues to bore and delight everyone. More talk about the Senate. The next thing you know, this franchise is going to turn into the Manchurian Candidate, which is a great movie when it's not called Star Wars. The third paragraph of this crawl is about the exciting action of voting. Discount CGI Cloud City. There was no danger at all. 
bomb was time to explode at the moment of jinxing. I found you, Senator. Well, you blew up instead of her, so I'd say that's pretty successful. Senator Amidala, please. How does one go from queen to senator? Do you have to renounce your bloodline's claim to the throne? Is senator actually a higher office than queen to this society? I am so confused. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Um, did the Jedi luck out with sporadic uprisings until this moment in time? How do they keep the peace with so few of them if there aren't enough to go to war? That's like having a National Guard based in Nebraska with 15 people in it who can go to Florida if need be, but are powerless if anything happens later in Texas. Mm, the dark side clouds everything. Let's just go ahead and say it, Yoda is useless as a prophet. Also, how does Palpatine have such amazing control of the dark side of the Force that none of these Jedi can sense it three feet away? Impossible to see. The future is. And yet future prophecy bulls will drive everything we do from here on. Desktop hologram. I think the Count Dooku was behind it. Well, then, if you say so. The Count Dooku was once a Jedi. He couldn't assassinate anyone. It's not in his character. Did these assholes never once run into a Jedi who went to the dark side? Why does everyone fret about training someone like Anakin if that's the case? Sure, Darth Maul said something about revealing ourselves to the Jedi, but I thought he was implying they'd been gone a long time. Not that they had never existed. He's just returned from a border dispute on Anteon. He and Anakin were able to take care of that border dispute all by themselves. Not only amazing, but not filmed to show us how that works. I haven't felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of gun dogs. That sounds exciting. Let's watch that instead of this. Arby? Arby! Just like a phone that constantly rings, Jar Jar enters the picture to jangle your nerves. Annie? My goodness, you've grown. But you haven't. Hell, you guys are the same age now. And he'll always be that little boy I knew on tattooing. So let's have kids together. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. Why did you wait until the ship was deboarding to hit it? We'll have to try something more subtle this time, Sam. Why? Uh, she covered the cameras. I don't think she liked me watching her. Yeah, would anybody? Especially someone who basically led Dick first during the introductions a minute ago? You're using her as bait. Why not use another decoy? Why not dress and drag in her bedroom while she sleeps on a nondescript floor of this building? Besides, your senses aren't that attuned to my young apprentice. And yours are. Just how much back talk has Obi-Wan put up with from this little throughout the years? Because I'm betting it's way too much. Just being around her again is... intoxicating. Good God, man. Anakin is already out of control. The guy needs to bang a hooker fast. You've made a commitment to the Jedi Order, a commitment not easily broken. And which doesn't allow for the power of boners. If they know the exact floor and exact room Padme is sleeping in, why didn't they just program this thing to fire missiles into the room? Yeah, yeah, the assassins felt like they needed to be more subtle, but do you think people wouldn't be able to figure out this was foul play? The Chancellor doesn't appear to be corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> now here's something extremely weird. Obi-Wan jumps and crashes through the window like a dick, through blinds and what is probably some tough-ass glass, even if it has a small hole in it. It's amazing it doesn't fall to his death right here. This is something unbecoming of his character, and something Anakin might more likely do, since he's a hormone-based horn dog of a Jedi right now. Also, Obi-Wan jumps out of a window to grab onto a probe sent to kill Padme, because he thinks the probe will lead him to the person controlling it? He thinks he can interrogate the probe? WHO SENT YOU, PROBE?! You'd also think a subtle device like this might have a self-destruct button in order to evade evidence and capture, but we. Luckily for Obi-Wan, this murder probe is programmed to return to its owner after a failed murder attempt. I've got a gun that can fire with utmost accuracy, but I'll shoot the probe and let gravity decide this. Whoa, wait, what's that? Is that my falling master in the middle of all this craziness? Ex Machina to the rescue! This is the equivalent of thinking that if you jump at the last minute in a falling elevator, you'll be safe. There he is. Obi-Wan finds the assassin, because I guess every question is answered with the Force. But even with that, the assassin decided to fly in the general direction of Obi-Wan's fall just a second ago, even though she was way up high earlier. Jeez, how do they survive this sh the answer is just because. Phew, glad that's over. Time to take off my mask for virtually no reason. Hey. I hate it when he does that. You did the exact same thing a minute ago! Do you remember crashing through the glass after a fucking flying probe? Here's the problem. If you're going to explain he survives these things and somehow knows where Zam's ship is just because of the Force, you're gonna have to do a better job of relaying that message. This is some serious bullshit right here. Anakin doesn't pull out his lightsaber and infiltrate or crash this speeder instantly. <laughs> What? Once Anakin does use his lightsaber, he's terrifically bad at killing speeder pilots with it. This is more unbelievable than Harry finding Peter in the World Unity Festival crowd in Spider-Man, the stupid kid finding Spider-Man's mask in Spider-Man 2, and Peter Parker finding his engagement ring while falling off a building in Spider-Man 3. Also, Obi-Wan conveniently catches Anakin's lightsaber, but then sets it on the passenger seat without care, almost ensuring it will go airborne or otherwise missing during the ensuing aerial chase. Also, I thought Anakin wanted to see where the ship went, where the assassin went, and who she's working for. Instead, he just went right back to let's kill this asshole and doesn't seem the least bit concerned about the other knowledge. This weapon is your life. It really isn't. You can make more. And there are alternatives to fighting, as we learned from somebody else in the earlier trilogy. I forget who. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Not hilarious, overly manipulated foreshadowing. 
You wanna buy some death sticks? What a creative name for a thing. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This is the only time Jedi mind tricks ever work. Once with a stormtrooper in the first movie and with this drug dealer in the fifth movie. Also, during this entire chase, no one is standing at the door to make sure the assassin doesn't walk out. Obi-Wan is drinking, definitely something a fucking Jedi does when hunting somebody down. <laughs> oh, now I know why Obi-Wan is drinking, so that there's a callback to the original Star Wars in the Mos Eisley Cantina, and so George Lucas can find an excuse to cut off another limb. Also, why didn't she just shift into her other self for a disguise and simply walk out? Tell us now! They don't even try to Jedi mind trick Zam. They just go the old-fashioned Batman and or Jack Bauer route. It was a bounty hunter called... There's no chance in hell Django knew where anyone was and what time they'd be here. Just go right to hell with that <laughs> By the way, he had no problem jumping after probes and defying death and traffic a minute ago to find Zam. But this Django dude, ah, we'll just wait here and hope the dying changeling can tell us some stuff. Toxic dart. It'll probably be the only good shot this guy ever gets off during these movies. What about Senator Amidala? She will still need protecting. Handle that. Your Padawan will. I sensed he cared deeply about his mother and didn't want to train him because of that earlier. But now I can't sense this horny teenager's desire and will make him the primary guard for Amidala. Everything here would look beautiful if it didn't look fake as shit. The boy has exceptional skills. But he still has much to learn, Master. Somehow, between the last movie and this one, Obi-Wan and the Jedi Council have completely reversed their roles on the idea of Anakin as a Jedi. Too sure of themselves they are. Maybe it's that constant fear leads to the dark side tripe you've been preaching this whole time that makes them more confident than they should be. The prophecy is true. Your apprentice is the only one who can bring the Force back into balance. Yeah, about this prophecy. Is there some sort of turmoil going on where the Jedi need the Force to come back into balance? If so, what does Anakin need to do to bring about that balance? Exist? There's absolutely no explanation for this, and it feels like it was put in the script just to sound good. It will be your responsibility to take my place in the Senate. Representative Binks? Huh? Well, he certainly is qualified. I haven't worked for a year to defeat the Military Creation Act, to not be here when its fate is decided. Amidala's exposition is as clunky as the opening crawl, which already talked about this vote for which she wants to be present. Funny how after Amidala had the run-in with the autonomous probe the previous night, she's allowed to walk around unobstructed windows to her heart's delight. He's overly critical. He never listens. Where the f*** did this come from? You were just talking about making sure she's safe, and it turned into a diatribe about how life's unfair to you. It's not fair. Padme will not only ignore this childishness, but go on to enter a sexual relationship with this whiny baby. Please don't look at me like that. Why not? Because it feels like you want to f*** me with your lightsaber, you creepy bastard. Sorry, milady. Well, that is f***ing evil and creepy, and now I need a shower. Rose Byrne and Natalie Portman are not my sister wives in this scene. Don't do anything without first consulting either myself or the council. Especially f***ing this queen, you hear? I ain't seen one of these since I was prospecting on Subterrell. You saw these kinds of poison darts when you were prospecting? I see funny little cuts on the side to give it away. Those analysis droids only focus on symbols. Oh, I mean, what? This is a library, right? And it looks like everything is digital, so why the need for large stacks of blue everywhere? Um, the official subtitles here say that R2-D2 gave that cook robot raspberries. What the f***? I'll be with the people that I love. You do not love her yet! You haven't even seen her in ten years! You have a boner! That's it! How does Jedi training not include sex ed? Attachments. For men. So do all the Jedi just hope that all potential Jedi in the universe are created by that Shmi Skywalker method of midi-glorian pregnancy? I'll tell you how this romance is made even more painful. It has to start with Amidala resisting Anakin for nearly the whole movie before they can start lying around in flowers and sh**. Floaty ball practice. Because someone erased it from the archive memory. Oh, come on. So let me get this straight. Just on the off chance someone was looking for this planet for whatever reason, someone decided to erase it from the archives. And why would anyone be looking for this planet? Except when someone finds a rare poison dart that only the chef at a diner could recognize. Also, they removed the planet, but they didn't remove anything else that might help someone locate it? That gives you, like, the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish, right? You might as well put a neon sign there that said, Planet removed for incriminating purposes. But Master Yoda, who could empty information from the archives? That's impossible, isn't it? Yeah, who could it be? Who has the power around here? I'm gonna blame George W. Bush until we get to the bottom of this. Apparently R2 navigates stairs one by one, very slowly, but can catch up to them no problem even though they never stop. I heard they even tried to amend the Constitution so you could stay in office. She was a queen though, right? Not an elected official. Or does this planet just elect people and call them queens? The day we stop believing democracy can work is the day we lose it. Let's pray that day never comes. You have a queen in this world, right? Isn't that a monarchy? Or are you like the British monarchy where you have a queen, but she has no power? There it is, R4. Yep, the planet we've probably seen for many, many parsecs because it is a huge celestial body in space. I am just now acknowledging that I see it. You will be delighted to hear that we are on schedule. All these people need to know is that Obi-Wan is a Jedi, and they just blab the whole evil plan to him before making sure it's okay to tell him. I don't like sand. 
It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Never a more eloquent word was spoken in order to woo a fine woman. Here everything is soft and smooth. This line works. Also, didn't you fools just get here? Rapid romance is f***ing rapid. <sighs> we take great pride in our combat education and training programs. But we don't spend much time on aiming practice. An unaltered clone for himself. Curious, isn't it? Not if you're trying to come up with the origin story of Bubba Fett, it isn't. Everything in the background of this shot is some bullshit people should be ashamed of. Movie unintentionally inspires Twilight. Do you get the sense they walked into this meadow and, like Back to the Future 2, ordered this background to show the scenery channel? We need a system where the politicians sit down. This romance and politics in the same scene. Skip! Anakin pretends to be hurt more seriously than he is. She falls forward and movie thinks that's love. Movie misses its chance to insert the lightsaber swooshing noise in this scene. No one apparently told Django that a Jedi was coming, because he left his incriminating in the closet completely out in the open for anyone to see. They'll do their job well. A whole army of Django Fets, and somehow the bad guys are gonna lose this thing. They're about to eat fruit with fucking silverware. From the mum. And skip. I'm haunted by the kiss that you should never have given me. Ladies and gentlemen, the fucking poetry of George Herbert Walker Lucas. You're starting to become a Jedi? I'm... I'm a senator. Sex is impossible because senators have senator parts and Jedi have Jedi parts. We could have accepted this love story in Attack of the Clones if we could have seen Anakin doing awesome Jedi shit throughout the movie. And Padme, despite everything in the world telling her not to, decided, you know what, fuck it, I need to go to this Jedi and break off a piece. And the story of Luke and Leia's birth gets told without all this arguing, pleading, and terrible dialogue trying to make it so. And it would have cut about 20 minutes from the movie. Obi-Wan has to give his report while standing out in the middle of a torrential downpour. Did the Council ever authorize the creation of a clone army? Hmm, Palpatine came into power about ten years ago. That Jedi who supposedly ordered a clone army died about ten years ago. And there's only one guy who has the kind of power to do all this. So, hmm, who could it be? Blind we are if creation of this clone army we could not see. But instead of explaining how that's possible, we dedicated many minutes to Amidala and Anakin not having sex. In other words, these movies tell you a lot about what is happening, but don't tell you the ins and outs of why those things are. And there definitely isn't any ins and outs going on in the bedroom either. I think it is time we informed the Senate that our ability to use the Force is diminished. Whoa, what? Where did that come from? And even if it's true, why would you tell the obviously corrupt Senate? Also, this movie uses the word Senate, Senator, and Vote more than it uses the word Force. Only the Dark Lord of the Sith knows of our weakness. Thankfully, he's not also the Supreme Chancellor. I mean, phew, could you imagine? No. You got that right. I saw my mother. Thank God a vision came to Anakin to go save his mother. I just wish it could have happened about 30 minutes ago. I'm sorry, I don't have a choice. You're right. You have no choice between ignoring your dream mom's drama and continuing to honor your non-dream pledge to hide and protect Padme. Fate is forcing your hand, as it often does, through vague dreams. Dad! No! Whoa, what the hell is going on? How did we get here? Obi-Wan fist fights with this dude instead of force choking him or force pushing him or any of the other non-hand-to-hand -hand force attacks. Ah yes, of course. I remembered to bring my throwable homing beacon that instantly sticks to anything I throw it towards. Also, the world of Star Wars is one in which a homing beacon like this can just casually be tossed on your ship without said ship's sensors picking it up whatsoever. Shouldn't rain be hitting the lightsaber and producing little puffs of smoke? Do you know where they are now? It's amazing, even with all the Jedi training and peacekeeping he's done over ten years, there wasn't one time he was allowed to fly over to Tatooine and visit his mom. He must have put a homing device on our home. They do realize they're being tracked, but only after they arrive at their destination. Inconvenient. This is a clear case where the challenge is way too high for anyone to survive it. And therefore, you just sit in the theater wondering why Obi-Wan isn't dead. Get him dead! Get him! Fire! Boba Fett, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me, why is it in Star Wars when the bad guy's ships fire at the good guy's ships, the lasers go all around the ship instead of at least one blast hitting it? Once again, something easily catches up to another something that can't close any further distance when it's 50 feet away. Well, we won't be seeing him again. Overly cocky Jango Fett is overly cocky. Hey, I remember that scene. I just noticed something. There's really no reason R2 couldn't have come on this mission. All he's doing right now is following Padme and Anakin around. I'm pretty sure R4 is the red R2 you look for in toy stores at this point. Stay with the ship, R2. Why did you even let him out? I am C-3PO. So Watto sold me to some other person, and she decided to take the incomplete C-3PO with her, and someone decided to finish the job? Owen Lars, uh, this is my girlfriend, Baru. Let me get this straight. The powers that be decided that Luke would someday come to live here, even though Anakin met Owen and Baru? You didn't think that would be a huge risk? What if Vader decided to come back to the old homestead for whatever reason? Not that I'm complaining, but Padme decided to wear the super hot ab-bearing outfit to go meet Annie's mom. The editing is confusing. We were logically following Anakin as he seeks bloody revenge against the Tusken Raiders who killed his mom. And this scene makes us think we're still following him, but no, we're suddenly on an entirely different planet following Obi-Wan. We must persuade the Commerce Guild and the Corporate Alliance to sign the treaty. 
Just once, I'd like to see somebody hiding in a corner somewhere, and the bad guys aren't talking about the most important essence of their plan in earshot. Just once, I'd like to hear they had bagels for breakfast or something. Furthermore, the guy he was following, Django Fett, isn't even in this meeting with Count Dooku. So what kind of luck is that? He just decided to walk around, find a secret opening in the mountains, and stumble on the plot of the movie? Count Dooku walks right past a Jedi here and does not sense him. Stay with me, Mom. In the grand tradition of all dying Star Wars characters, Shmi held on long enough for one final meeting before passing away. Also, Anakin watches his mother die because something something dark side motivation something something. This movie doesn't earn the dark side transformation of Anakin. He was a whiny kid for most of this movie, and now he massacres a bunch of Tuscans. Had someone been here to stop him, and that need for revenge festered in his heart? The next time would be a good time for a massacre. Most of everything we know about Anakin was talked about, not shown, and this comes off as rushed. Pain. Suffering. Yeah, but apparently your ability to use the Force isn't good anymore, so what can you trust? Death, I feel. Hmm, I don't feel any of that shit, but maybe I should act like I do. What's the bigger sin here? Bad guy bug thing stumbling upon Obi-Wan? Or Obi-Wan parking his ship out in the goddamn open like this? Anakin takes his dead rotting mother into the house because Jedi reasons, and also disease. Why'd she have to die? She probably didn't, but you left her alone here as a slave on this planet to pursue your own Jedi goals. What did you think was gonna happen to her? Happily ever after? I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. This is pretty much par for the course as to why we hated this performance. We kind of want Anakin to start being a colder person, definitely a lot less whiny at this point, more Darth Vader-y. Instead, our brains keep referring to their shut up section. I killed them all. Don't use the pronoun game, Annie. Using the pronoun game leads to the dark side. And she still had sex with him after this, for some reason. And not just the men, but the women and the children too. Anakin can somehow tell Tuscan women and children from the men. I'm not even mad, that's amazing. I'm a Jedi. I know I'm better than this. And this is the only time we see Anakin struggle with the good and bad of his feelings. Everything else has been dark side and wanna screw Padme. I miss you so much. Lucas asked him to deliver this line as though his dick got cut off halfway through. But he also knew an enchanted fairy would eventually grow his dick back, so he's not super concerned about it. But he wants to seem like he is. He's carrying a message from an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Huh. Uh, Master Annie, does that name mean anything to you? I wonder if he means old Ben. I have tracked the bounty hunter Django Fett to the droid foundries in Geonosis. Despite the fact that Django completely disappeared from the action, I managed to stumble upon a completely new part of the plot that is important for all the good guys to know. Hologram action sequence. He's like my father. But you heard Master Windu, he gave me strict orders to stay here. And Obi-Wan gave you strict orders to stay on Naboo, and we saw how that worked. Why the f*** is C-3PO suddenly on this mission? If only Senator Amidala were here. Entire sequence of events leads to Jar Jar making an important decision in the Senate to give Palpatine more power. Also, was this part of Palpatine's plan? Did he know that Padme would appoint the dumbest character alive to be her replacement when the hit the fan? How awesome would this be if Dooku had been in the first movie? And the first movie wasn't the first movie. How many awesome backstories are we left to imagine while the story leaves us wanting? The dark side of the Force has clouded their vision, my friend. Again, how? Perfect time to explain this bullshit and immediately goes on to the next subject. Wait, this is an exhaust vent they landed in, right? Do exhaust vents usually have perfect landing platforms for ships? Where are you going now? R2 decides to go against orders and leave the ship anyway, something he must only be doing to piss off C-3PO at this point, because at no time has R2 shown a tendency to go against orders since the new trilogy began. Conveyor belt of dangerous industry cliché! Also, this is the most video gamingest movie scene ever included in a movie just to sell a video game. I guess R2 knew that this would turn out okay. What a psychotic little bastard. Hey there, Star Wars fan. FYI, R2-D2 can fly. F*** you. I wonder what happened to poor little R2. He's always getting himself into trouble. How do you know that? You've only known R2 for a couple of hours. And don't give me he knew him from the first movie crap either, because 3PO was an off and on incomplete robot the entire time. Oh, I'm so confused. Maybe that explains why you aren't funny anymore. <laughs> movie is an asshole. That is the very definition of cheating and filmmaking, you f***er. This is equivalent to telling your mother you have terminal cancer, and then when she starts sobbing, you trash talk about how you pranked her and how stupid she is. Give me a break. Why would there be anything like this sitting around in this random part of the factory? And once again, R2 compatible. I still can't figure out why Django even needs to be here. On one planet, he's the guy they use to make clones. On another planet, they're making army bots, and he's here because Obi-Wan needed to catch a break. I thought that we had decided not to fall in love. You see why the romance should have taken off a lot sooner? There's basically 40 minutes left in this movie, and they're still trying to resolve this. I truly, deeply love you. George Lucas thinks people talk this way. Also, Jedi, skip! Our heroes luck out and are taken to an arena to be executed, instead of simply getting killed on the spot. Movie unintentionally inspires John Carter. I might be scared of these things if they didn't look like Tex Avery drawings put into the weird science machine and donated to the Umbrella Corporation. I've got a bad feeling about this. Character breaks the fourth wall to talk to the audience about the film itself. 
This creature basically didn't want to kill Amidala, just make her sexier. Nobody seems particularly concerned that one of the prisoners is free. This thing is terrible at thingy. Bullshit. Also, a simple kick to the chest incapacitates this heaping mound of psychosis. Hey George, while we're here, humanizing Boba Fett was one of the stupidest ideas you had in these prequels. And that's saying something. Aren't these animals weak-minded enough so they can Jedi mind trick them? Or is that just a human-to-human -human interaction? Obi-Wan pokes at the beast instead of just force-throwing the spear into its brain. Ow, my vagina! You're impossibly outnumbered. I don't think so. How did these robots know to start coming down the hallway? Everyone in power is here, and no one gave an order or pressed a button or anything that would make a robot army start coming down here dramatically. And why only four of them? Star Wars finally gives us a nerdgasm scene with dozens of Jedi and lightsabers all at once. And I'd take a sin or two off if I hadn't had to sit through two movies of mostly boring bullshit to finally get this. Since you enjoyed this in Phantom Menace so much, Lucas ups the ante with even more Jedi versus copious amounts of CGI droids. Why did the drone with the C-3PO head decide to march into battle? Doesn't his mind work differently? Wouldn't he just go lie down somewhere until all this was over? <laughs> Jesus Christ, skip! Django Unchained. I'm terribly sorry about all this. Basically, these things don't even need heads if they have no control with them on. I quite decide myself. I hate you and I wish you would die. First off, this is too many goddamn shots to block. Second, and maybe more importantly, Padme doesn't have a lightsaber. How does she live? Look! Eagles? A perimeter create! What was that, Yoda? I couldn't hear you over the battle, this ship, and your three-pack-a-day voice. So, if his dad's head had fallen out of the helmet right here, would he have been even more traumatized, or... You know, you'd think he would have laughed a little. Because, come on, that's funny. Also, the birth of Bubba Fett might have been cool if that asshole didn't get casually tossed in a sarlacc. Okay, Sam, you're running, you're running, there's all sorts of battle going on around you, we'll fill that in later. The Death Star is apparently fully operational in, like, 20 years. They must have had a million contractors working 24-7 on that thing. Cerebrum aside. Shoot him down! We're out of rockets, sir. F*** you, you are not. Why are you even still flying around then? Why didn't you tell anyone that before we got to this point? You're gonna pay for all the Jedi that you killed today, Dooku. Saying things! Electricity, curiously a trait only dark side force users have. What a f***ing surprise. Is that the 50th limb cut off in this franchise? He could finish them both off right now, or at least Obi-Wan if he knows where Anakin is headed, but besides, nah. The dark side I sense in you. Which I somehow can't sense when I'm on Coruscant when Palpatine is around. And we've established we've lost much of our force power, but f*** it, I can now. Yoda finally pulls out a lightsaber. He finally fights. It took 10 hours of Star Wars to finally see this, and I'm torn because he's a bastard CGI creation now. Why does this guy need a cane again? Here was a glorious chance to see three Jedi all combining their force power together and stopping this ship from flying. Or, as we said before, why can't Yoda just stop this ship himself if size doesn't matter? This thing is smaller than Luke's ship in the swamp. The force is powerful, but is no match for an internal combustion engine. Everybody goddamn misses. Let's talk about Palpatine's plan. It required Amidala to be taken off the planet so she couldn't vote on the Military Creation Act. Then she had to make Jar Jar Binks her replacement, who was then passively bullied to request a vote granting unlimited power to Palpatine. Then the Jedi have to stumble on a poison dart that was only used because another assassin failed, a dart that only a diner owner could verify. Then Palpatine removed the planet from the archives, which required even more sleuth work. Then when Obi-Wan went to the cloner planet, the people there showed him the entire plot no questions asked, which led him to Jango. Jango had to curiously leave for another planet where the droids were being manufactured so that Obi-Wan could relay that message back to the Republic, and only then could they get the ball rolling. Without all that, what did he plan to do? Begun. The Clone War has. Did Yoda just name this war? Or did the Jedi have some prophecy that warned of a clone war? I mean, who gave him the authority to name wars and sh**? Do you? Yes. Do you? Dude, I like totally did already. Lots. <laughs>My goodness, you've grown. Or more beautiful, I mean. You've grown up. Don't try to grow up too fast. But I am grown up. You've changed so much. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. You sure to spout it, huh? Oh, I grow up so I'll admit, this is gonna feel weird under a Disney logo. <sighs> tradition for tradition's sake. Also, reading. The March of War! These opening crawls always seem to tell a story that is not logical from where we left off. The Jedi and the clones destroyed the droid army in the factory where they were built in the last movie. But suddenly Dooku can go around making successful attacks that he wasn't capable of before. These two ships are doing absolutely nothing except making a long, unbroken shot possible. Of course, when it's all a cartoon, how impressive is that? This is just stupid, ludicrous survival. Also, this brings to light the fact that there appears to be no solid military plan involved on either side. Hey, just send all your ships out and we'll flip a coin. Heads we die, tails we die. Well, oh, Someone's gotta win, might as well be us. Oh, flying is for droids. Obi-Wan became the one-liner asshole of this series. If you have droids that can do this, why not give them bombing capabilities? The General's command ship is dead ahead. Still, like four minutes ago, you said the same thing. General Grievous's ship is directly ahead. 
neither it nor you moved or changed direction in the last four minutes. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. In earlier uses of this line, it was always in a situation that was undefined. The person saying it didn't know why they got a bad feeling, but they got it nonetheless. Now you're just sticking it in for lip service. Revenge of the Sith brings the new trilogy's circle of life to a close by delivering us more extremely useless Jedi droid battles. If only the bad guys in these movies had made their ships less R2 compatible, they would have won the sh**. So it's come to this, a coughing robot. Destroyers. This is almost a reenactment of the scene from Phantom Menace when these destroyers showed up. You'd think they learned to come from the sides to make defense nearly impossible. Drop your weapon. There's no reason these droids didn't blast these guys already. Uh -oh. You stood here for a solid minute while Anakin hung from this thing. R2 continues to accidentally himself out of every situation he finds himself in. Sith Lords are our speciality. Yeah, except for Qui-Gon. Too soon? Also, you faced one Sith Lord by my count, and you only beat him because Qui-Gon softened him up. Anakin here is a newbie, so this statement makes no sense whatsoever, especially considering the two of you lost quickly to this dude last movie. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. I rolled a 20-sided die and got a million extra hit points, so come at me, bro. Also, no one for whom this was true would actually bother to say this shit. Robots enter this Jedi battle to make things extra pointless. Get! Get! This CGI makes it look like this shouldn't even hurt. Yep, somewhere in George Lucas's basement, there are a number of severed arms and hands. He didn't commit the crimes, but he is haunted by them. Good, Anakin, good. I remember Return of the Jedi too. He cut off your arm, and you wanted revenge. Feel as old as time. <laughs> Another Wilhelm bites the dust. Such a tragic family. So the good guys are blasting this ship, but why? Don't they know Palpatine is on it? Don't they know two Jedi are trying to save Palpatine? <laughs> I don't know what I just saw, but it was total bullshit. Activate red shields! Why didn't they do this before? Do you have a plan B? I hope not. Luke and Leia need to be born. Aside from the coughing, which is dumb as hell, how does a robot get promoted through the ranks so quickly and become a general? What the fuck is this nonsense? Discount robot Darth Mauls. Somehow, the best chance for survival involves Anakin trying to crash land this gigantic ship, as opposed to any kind of Jedi something something escape pod something. 8 plus 60. <laughs> Well, that means something. It's good to see that during all this war, someone spotted the crashing ship and sent four firefighting jets to come spray water on it. Maybe don't shoot it down next time. Landing strip straight ahead. We're coming in too hot. Too hot for 10 miles of runway? How is that possible? Calculated risk? Behind the scenes control? I don't know. Seems a bit foolish to me for the Emperor to endanger himself in a crash landing like this. Well, the first 24 minutes of this thing are some bullshit, but it's still better than the Trade Federation negotiations. Well, you owe me one, and not for saving your skin for the 10th time. Ninth time. That business on Cato and Amoidia doesn't, doesn't count. Once again, Jedi talk about some we never got to see. These two are doing a marvelous job hiding their secret romance. And by marvelous, I of course mean terrible. There were whispers that you'd been killed. Why? Who knew the situation enough to make any kind of speculation? Wait, not here. Yes, not here, where you've already run to me, picked me up in your arms, and canoodled me. Let's actually save the kissing for another place where no one can actually see us and Annie, I'm pregnant. It's truly amazing how Yoda and a whole bunch of Jedi Council members can't sense this shit. What are we gonna do? Okay, I have an elaborate plan that involves you dying, me turning evil, and our twins not knowing they're related for almost 30 years. What do you say? The happiest moment of my life. Except when my mom died and I slaughtered all those Tusken Raiders, but this is a close second. You are so... beautiful. She's okay, but have you seen her decoy? It's only because I'm so in love. No one who has ever been in love would write dialogue like this. But it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> in the span of one movie, Padme has gone from serious, determined protector of Naboo to flirty giggle girl in a nighty. Anakin rips off the My Love Is Gonna Die Chosen One dreams from Neo in The Matrix Reloaded. How do you sleep with this much light pouring in the window? Shut the fucking blinds, you idiots. Also, you're dating and just dating a baby in secret, but you're living together openly in the capital city? You die in childbirth. It was only a dream. I won't let this one become real. I will lightsaber the death out of you. I doubt the queen will continue to allow me to serve in the Senate. How do you go from queen to senator, but then the replacement queen has more power than you do? Is this monarchy not based on birthright? Is the queen elected, but then still called a queen? I'm so confused about Naboo's politics. And that's in a trilogy that spent ungodly amounts of time on politics. Yourself, you speak of, or someone you know. There's no way Anakin is holding back all of his feelings right now. This guy wears his whole life on his sleeve, and yet the Force tells Yoda nothing. The fear of loss is a path to the dark side. What isn't a path to the dark side, huh? Train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. 
It seems like this would have been Jedi 101, with Obi-Wan teaching Anakin this on the first day of class, especially since the whole Jedi Council didn't want to train him because of that very reason. Somehow this guy made it through his training without one whit of knowledge. So Luke Amaya has fallen, and Master Voss has moved his troops to Boss Pity. My brain just spun a wheel of chance to figure out what the hell Obi-Wan just said. I'm depending on you. For what? I don't understand. Why would you? He's literally given you zero information so far. I guess this guy is somewhere on some other planet, sitting in a chair with the exact dimensions of this chair? Jesus. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? He's right. It's a system we cannot afford to lose. Because Wookiees produce tons of wool for the universe or some sh**. Actually, I have no idea what they do, but Chewbacca, man! What kind of nonsense is this? George Lucas films his actors speaking in private. The only reason the Council has approved your appointment is because the Chancellor trusts you. Can someone not bug his office? Why do you have to enlist the iffy Anakin as an undercover detective? Anakin did not take to his new assignment with much enthusiasm. It's very dangerous putting them together. Seems like maybe you three could have prevented a galactic disaster, but just didn't for some reason. With all due respect, Master, is he not the chosen one? With all due respect, Obi, were you not voicing your own concerns about him in the last f***ing movie? Because you were, ass. It's like Lucas thinks of a line of dialogue that will propel his narrative, then assigns it to a character at random. A prophecy that Miss Red could have been. And you're only bringing this up now? You guys have done a lot based on this prophecy you suddenly don't seem to trust because the writers want to make you Nostradamus. He will not let me down. He never has. What? These movies have implied nothing short of an exasperated mentor and rebellious student dynamic between these two. The f*** are you saying right now? I mean, sh Anakin literally disobeys you at every turn. I hope right you are. Man, did the prequels take all the fun out of Yoda's speech patterns or what? Hold me. Like you did by the lake on Naboo. Specific hugging instructions are specific. Also, I didn't ever think it would come to this, but I'm sinning love. So long ago when there was nothing but our love. No politics, no plotting, no war. Um, uh, while you were falling in love last movie, all kinds of politics, plotting, and war were going on. What the actual f***? Cirque des Old Bubbles. I know they don't trust you. Anakin is officially the worst undercover cop ever. Blabs to Palpatine within 90 seconds. I want to know who the f*** on the council trusts Anakin and has the power to override Yoda and Windu on matters such as these. The Jedi use their power for good. Good is a point of view, Anakin. Anakin's mind is more easily manipulated than a first grader's. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Shh, quiet. I'm trying to watch the electric bubble show, dude. He could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. What purpose did it serve for Darth Plagueis to impregnate Shmi, who then went to Tatooine and gave birth to a potential Jedi who, without a whole bunch of bull happening, would never have been discovered? Then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. This series has been so focused on keeping the Palpatine Darth Sidious secret that it's lost sight over what could have been an awesome thing to see. Sidious learning about the Force and killing his master. That's all these movies are, explanations and backstories of things that would have been awesome to see but we only hear about. Cheap Chewbacca cameo feels cheap in cameo. <laughs> Did these Wookiees just do a Tarzan yell? My god, man, it just hurts my soul. However, it may turn out just to be a wild panther chase. Goose called, it doesn't appreciate your appropriation of its idiom. I have trained you since you were a small boy. I have taught you everything I know. Except that part about controlling your emotions and whatnot. We skipped that lesson. I'm not gonna die in childbirth, Annie. You remember the dream about his dying mom he had as she was actually dying, though, right? We are being held hostage. They are watching us. But not closely enough, apparently. Obi-Wan watches himself pilot a ship away from the dock, and I'm left to wonder, am I watching the island right now? And somehow Obi-Wan managed to fake everyone out by not being on the ship when it flew away. Something we didn't get to see because it's total bullshit. When did Obi-Wan learn to ride one of these random bastards? This military fortress has no way of detecting and alerting General Grievous of this Jedi lizard intrusion. I think for you have not found yourself in my grave. Grievous sounds exactly like Ceres from Galaxy Quest. Kill him. While these four stun gun guards attack Obi-Wan, none of the Grievous loyal robots do jack or sh**. Wow, that was perfectly sized to fall on four incompetent robots. I've been trained in your Jedi arts by Count Dooku. When did you guys have time for that? What's better than one or two lightsabers? Four lightsabers. This is the funniest image in all of Star Wars. People just walking around and minding their own business while a huge battle takes place upstairs. You must realize you are doomed. Saying things. <laughs> Obi-Wan's instant spiritual bond with this planet's version of a hippogriff. And yeah, sure, I guess he's using the Force's connection with all the universe to do this. But honestly, I just wanted to say the word hippogriff in this video, okay? I mean, it's not like you didn't roll your eyes at this sh 
to it. Man, you've never seen more lost lightsabers than these f***ing prequels. That shit's like candy in these films. I think the whole reason for the plot now is so that George Lucas can insert holograms on screen. I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. The dark side of the Force surrounds the Chancellor. Oh, so you guys got your ability to see more clearly now? The dark side's been clouding your vision all the way up until now. I guess the Force simply acts according to the whim of the screenwriter. Don't you wonder why they won't make you a Jedi Master? Don't you wonder why Anakin is so powerful in the Force but so blind to this super obvious manipulation? And you will be able to save your wife from certain death. Except not, and when Padme still dies, it makes no sense that Anakin Vader doesn't then go into berserker mode and consume the entire galaxy, or at least kill Palpatine for lying. Obi-Wan apparently can punch this robot's electric weapon with his bare hand and not suffer damage from it. These two are wrestling on the control seat of this disc transport while it perfectly executes hairpin turns. In other words, f you. Both of these fools land on a hangar floor, which is lucky as sh since this disc craft goes over the edge and falls 18 stories below. Revenge of the convenience. Obi-Wan never once uses the force push against this asshole, even though he clearly showed the ability to do so. I think Chancellor Palpatine is a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? What? 90 seconds of what am I gonna do contemplation. You're under arrest, Chancellor. He didn't even get a scene where they tell Yoda about Palpatine, what he might think about the situation. This arrest seems totally rushed and emotionally charged, completely anti-Jedi in every way. How did this asshole become a Jedi if he's so damn easy to kill? And Mr. No Name here too? And this is sort of the problem movies have in general. They have a hard time explaining how good someone is at a particular art, so the answer is let's make everyone else really bad at their job. Emperor versus Mace Windu battle really heats things up with a big load of boring. I'm surprised a big turkey power-up icon didn't show up on screen, or a big pile of money. I think this officially qualifies as a fetish. Henceforth, you shall be known as Darth Vader. I don't know why that name popped into my head, especially since everybody else has not-so-subtle Darth names like Maul, Sidious, and Plagueis. But I'm not married to it. Let's see what happens. This is all we see of Yoda during this entire section of the movie. He just feels something is wrong. He doesn't do anything that ever makes us appreciate the character from Empire Strikes Back. The guy who told us do not try is the least doing character in this entire trilogy. I want you to go to the Jedi Temple. We will catch them off balance. Somehow, they'll not feel all this evil bullshit going on right now and won't detect you when you come to slaughter all the kids. Execute. Order 66. Yes, my lord. Commander Cody doesn't stop for even one second to ask why the Emperor looks more like a potato than he does the Emperor. Also, if you remember, Cody, 66 is the order the Senate defines as wiping out the Jedi like little bitches. What planet is this? What Jedi is this? You don't care. I don't care. I don't even think Lucas cares, as long as it looks pretty. Tim Burton designed this alien planet, but asked to be uncredited after he saw a rough first cut. Oh no, not that Jedi. I grew to love her so much. Oh, f you. I can't believe these movies actually made me hate Yoda so much. There are CG animators out there who got tired of all the ways they had to draw Yoda feeling bad about something. Dumbass Jedi does not eject. Look, I know we're going for a killing the Jedi montage here, but you are the ones who set them up to be superhero gods. So when you go to slaughter them, maybe make some of them a fraction better than regular humans in these situations, eh? Jesus. This movie does more to tear down the lore of how powerful Jedi are than it does anything else. CGI is fun! Whee! They took forever to kill him, and now I'm supposed to have a boner because Yoda killed two guys. As long as you throw the Emperor down a shaft later, all these kids' deaths will be forgiven. Very f***ing tragic misuse of Natalie Portman. Wait, a second ago they were letting this asshole leave. Then some Jedi Tommy Tomasino jumps in and starts killing troopers, and then they're trying to kill this guy? The f***? If I had told you at the outset that two of the three prequel movies would contain scenes of Obi-Wan swimming underwater, would you have believed me? Because I don't think you would have. Goodbye, Chewbacca. Oh, so that really was Chewbacca. How did this guy get caught up with Han Solo then? Goes from a war hero on this planet to helping some asshole smuggle stuff across the galaxy. That's some coming home right there. Did you find Kenobi? Sir, no one could have survived that fall. In real life, almost everyone thinks there's at least a small chance someone could survive a fall like that. In the movies, all the bad guys are 100% sure no one can survive a fall like that. I heard there was an attack on the Jedi Temple. You can see the smoke from here. Um, yeah, that Jedi Temple getting attacked scene was intense. I heard a lot of harrowing dialogue about it. I feel so helpless. You mispronounce pointless. This lava moon's orbit is so close to its giant ass planet, I'm surprised it hasn't burned up in the atmosphere yet. Who the f said, yeah, definitely need to build an outpost on this moon? I know there's something wrong with the scene because none of these younglings' hands are detached. Anakin kills the 33 people necessary in order to attain orange eyes. So this is how Liberty dies with thunderous applause. <laughs> Sorry, something really stupid stuck in my throat there. Carry on. For the clones to discover the recalibration, a long time it will take. Roughly as long as it took you to say that sentence, so yes. There can't be. 
another failure here. So much of the reason why Obi-Wan can't believe Anakin did this is because of all the adventures they've had off-screen together that they've merely alluded to a couple of times. Meanwhile, all we've seen of Anakin is a whiny, quick-to-anger little bastard. The emotion of this scene is lost. And that will my new apprentice. Good of the Emperor to say this in perfect view of the security recordings. Use your feelings, Obi-Wan, and find him you will. Since when do a Jedi's feelings work in these movies? Why doesn't Obi-Wan just play the incriminating security video of Anakin killing children for her? Anakin is the father, isn't he? Ask that again. I was distracted by all the bullshit in the background. Anakin is the father, isn't he? You seriously didn't know that already? God damn, can Jedi sense shit or fucking not? Obi-Wan leaves Padme, walks toward his ship, and the next time we see them, they're about to fly to the lava planet. At no point do we see Padme making a tough decision to say, it, Anakin is evil. Let's kill him. I don't care if I'm carrying twins. That guy is dead. Also, I guess Obi-Wan didn't search his feelings about Anakin's whereabouts. He just happened to know someone who knew the information he needed. Obi-Wan brings Padme to the lava planet for his kill of Anakin, because what could possibly go wrong? Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Why do we hate this line so much? Is it because the badass character Padme we saw in Phantom Menace going around leading an assault on the Viceroy has become a lump of melodramatic mush? Let. Ha. Uh, go. Der okay. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Discount what Jesus said. This is what it's all been leading towards. Obi-Wan fighting Anakin. And it's really kind of the letdowniest of all letdowns. Man, if only we could have had some of this Yoda two movies ago. Hell, under this trilogy's structure, it practically demanded Yoda be terrible at Yodaing until way later. Yoda takes this lightning blast as if he wasn't expecting the Emperor to be evil or something. At last, the Jedi are no more. Not if anything to say about it, I have. Good job, movie. You made me want Frank Oz to shut up, somehow. Anakin's robotic arm somehow isn't strong enough to just crush Obi-Wan's throat. Not much but dual lightsaber duels going on right now. But I wonder, the Emperor had a tough time with Mace Windu during their duel, so how does he keep up with Yoda, who is flipping all around as super fast and is mostly considered to be the best Jedi up until recently? Seriously, how does he not see this until the last second? How did he not see Yoda stop it midair and start spinning it and then throwing it towards him? Yoda can catch the Sith lightning in his hands, proving his badassery. But eventually he falls, and another fall takes him out of the action. You assume temporarily. But the movie cuts back to the Anakin Obi-Wan fight and basically makes you forget that Yoda has options to get back in the fight. For example, elevators, stairs, the Force. Instead, the next time we see Yoda, he's crawling through a wiring duct as if he's totally defeated. Why would the battle ever come to this? I'd rather take my chances even if I was cornered than to jump down on a f***ing pipe hovering above lava to fight. It's completely unbelievable a lightsaber duel could go on this long without any lost limbs or ears or heads. Apparently not being nearly epic enough, the Obi-Wan-Anakin fight now has to feature them falling on a large metal thing that we have no idea what its purpose is other than to make lightsaber fights more dramatic. Because Lucas only has so many ideas, here's a hero after a near defeat falling from the bottom of a hovering space building into an awaiting rescue ship driven by the handsome minority side character. In case you haven't seen Empire Strikes Back. Into exile, I must go. Failed, I have. I know we need a reason why Yoda goes to Dagobah, but he very much gave up the fight with the Emperor too soon. All the cool stuff Yoda did in the past 10 minutes, forget about it. How fortunate is it that this tower stays upright while floating down a river of lava it's being consumed- Oh, f*** it. My lack of interest should be beyond obvious by now. Just tell me when it's over. This is supposed to be epic, but it feels like a guy who just learned After Effects creating his own fan fiction and sharing it on YouTube, which was founded the very year this movie came out. Coincidence? Wait, aren't they powering their pieces of metal junk to fly over this lava pit? Seems like this is a talent that could have gotten a lot more use over time. Basically, this means you can fly, as long as you have a thing underneath you. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! Yep, movie about superhero Jedi freaks that can leap small buildings will now somehow be decided by a couple of feet above sea level, because Sun Tzu! I have the high ground! So did Darth Maul, and you saw how that turned out. Also, even if high ground mattered, why would Anakin need to give up in this instance? Can he simply drive back to where all this started, or find another spot to dismount? It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! You're still on about that. Stupidly, Obi-Wan takes pity on his former student and walks away before confirming his death. Terminator Genesis. Medically, she's completely healthy. Are there really no human doctors left in this world? Everyone here gets treated by a big Hero 6 dressed in Johnny 5 clothing. For reasons we can't explain, we are losing her. It's called the She Wasn't in the Original Trilogy Disease. Luke. Padme names her kids as they exit her womb, which is simply unnatural. It's like Lucas said, no one will know who these kids are. Better have Padme name them as soon as they pop out. Ah, I see Padme went to the Close Your Eyes and Tilt Your Head school of movie deaths. It seems in your anger, you killed her. Darth Vader believes this. Also, wow, lying liars and the lies they tell. Isn't he already Darth Vader? Does he really still need manipulating? No! Yes? I mean, no. We must take them somewhere where the Sith will not sense their presence.
We'll take Luke to somewhere like, I don't know, Anakin's old home planet. Why the hell not? And what of the boy? To Tatooine. Do his family send him? It's almost like they forgot the guideline they set just 20 seconds earlier. I will take the child and watch over him. Kinda. Also, he and I will keep our same last names because f that pseudonym bullshit. Qui-Gon? How to commune with him, I will teach you. I'll also teach you about forgetting him, too. Have the protocol droid's mind wiped. But not the R2 unit. He'll go on with all his memories, but forget he knew any of these people. Yeah, this saga would have felt incomplete without the Padme funeral. Good call. Jar Jar is extra sad about his own part in the fall of the prequels. I mean, Empire. Man, they buried her with extra hair, right? Did she have that shit wigged out in a closet somewhere already? That is a fuck ton of hair, is all I'm saying. Discount long distance, not actually Peter Cushing. Movie thinks construction footage of a doomed thing will make for an exciting ending. And movie is wrong for the 147th time. Isn't Vader still badly burned? Did they ever give him anything for that? That's gonna get infected. Touching Alderaan baby delivering scene is undercut by the future knowledge that all these are people on this planet gonna die. Here, have a baby. Also, Jedi storks. Also, Owen and Beru age like 40 years while Luke ages 20 the next time we see them. Movie prequel trilogy thinks it's tied off all the loose ends despite ending roughly 20 years from the start of the original trilogy. What about Luke's puberty? What about Leia's struggle with why her parents' castle has a ballroom but never has any balls? Also, are we supposed to believe that Luke got his double sun gazing habit from his aunt and uncle while he was two weeks old? Such poetry. Oh, this is going to be easy. Flying is for droids. Oh, dear. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Always on the move. Sith Lords are our speciality. Did I miss something? How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Do you have a plan B? And try not to upset him. Not to worry. We are still flying half a ship. Another happy landing. Hello there. So uncivilized. I have the high ground! In his belly, you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you are slowly digested over a thousand years. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. Open war is upon you. Whether you would risk it or not. There are fields here. Endless fields. Where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming. Yeah. I need parts for a J-Type 327 Nubian. What's a Nubian? Cycle, break off a stray from the herd and flush him to the right. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Double impact. There's two of them. Now there are two of them. This time, there are two. Terminator 2. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I'm glad to have met you, Anakin. I was glad to meet you, too. Oh, Lawrence, this is the happiest day of my life! I think my testicles are dropping! Oh, boy, oh, boy, Mom. You sure can hydrate a pizza. Hello, everybody, and to this year's annual Las Vegas International Dodgeball Open, brought to you exclusively here on ESPN 8, The Ocho. There's only one person who guns an engine like that. It's got to be the roughest, tough guy of them all, Machine Gun Joe Viterbo! been in a cockpit before? No, sir, I've never been up in a plane before. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? You will bow down before me, both you, and then one day, your ass! You maniacs! You blew it up! Damn you all to hell! Earn this. Earn it. You've grown up. Cause you're grown up and you're grown up and you're grown up. 
Over the first billion years, the universe continued to expand and cool as matter gravitated into these massive concentrations we call galaxies. There are fields, endless fields, where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. A is for Axiom, your home sweet home. B is for by and large, your very best friend. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum. You, sir, truly are Mr. Incredible. You know, I was right to idolize you. I, I, I always knew you were tough, but tricking the probe by hiding under the bones of another super? Oh, man, I'm still geeking out about it. Show! Whoever wrote this episode should die! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! Secret love us, that's what we are. Is he not to destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force? What's in your wallet? But on my way, I'm gonna be doing this. If you get hit, it's your own fault. March to hell's deep. Leave none alive. Anakin, all I want is your love. All you need is love. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. There's a man out there. What do they call him during the war? You know, the, the pilots? Gremlins. It's running a little hot. Like you did by the lake on Naboo. Let's do what we did in Mexico City. This is Papa Dragon. I want this mission high and tight. I want to be home for dinner. But the war is over. The war is over, sir. The war is over. They taste like burning. Hey, I will deal with this Jedi slime myself. You fool! Deliver the device to me, or I will destroy your ship! <laughs>